Hey, welcome to the Study with Mendemonics YouTube channel. Uh, this lecture is going to be about renal tubular acidosis. It's one of the more common causes of NEGMA or non-anion gap metabolic acidosis and therefore you should know a few things about it. So what are the different types? Well, type 1 occurs in the distal renal tubules where there is impaired hydrogen secretion. Type 2 occurs in the proximal tubules where there is impaired bicarbonate reabsorption. And finally, type 4, which again occurs in the distal tubules secondary to hypoaldosteronism. Now, interestingly, the acidosis caused by the type 4 RTA is actually generated in the proximal renal tubules due to impaired ammonium excretion. But most nephrologists still consider this a distal problem because that is where aldosterone has its effects on the kidney. Many of you have probably heard this mnemonic, stones, bones, low aldosterone. So the stones refers to type 1 because of the in association with nephrolithiasis. The bones for type 2 because of rickets and multiple myeloma. And the low aldosterone for type 4 because of hypoaldosteronism. Now this is a table similar to that which many of you have already seen before. Uh, there's certain characteristics of RTAs that board reviewers want you to know about. Um, oftentimes you won't see diagnosis and treatment on here because they tend to be a little bit more complicated and we'll touch on that later. So here we go. Uh, type 1 RTA is due to impaired hydrogen secretion distally. Um, hydrogen is the first element. and This is RTA type 1 so that's one way you might remember this. Amphotericin is a drug induced cause but um, it's also thought that repeated damage from kidney stones may be another cause. Serum bicarb is very low, low potassium, and importantly, urine pH is always greater than 5.5. RTA type 2 occurs proximally decreased bicarb reabsorption. Associated conditions are Fanconi syndrome, multiple myeloma, and rickets. Serum bicarb is middle of the road, potassium again is low, and importantly this time the kidneys can acidify the urine so you'll see a pH a little bit lower, uh, usually less than 5.3. RTA type 4 um, due to aldosteronism and aldosterone causes sodium reabsorption in the distal tubules and potassium excretion through a sodium potassium exchanger. So when that's low you retain potassium and you dump sodium. Example, uh, diabetes, serum potassium is, or sorry, serum bicarb is still low, but oftentimes greater than 17. And serum potassium this time is high. And again, the urine pH less than 5.3 because the kidneys can excrete uh, hydrogen ions. And since we're on the topic of the kidneys, how about a little kidney physiology? So let's take a little trip now through the nephron. So the proximal tubule is where sodium is reabsorbed and water follows. So you get isotonic reabsorption. The filtrate starts at 300 milliosmoles and it remains at 300 milliosmoles. So now you get to the loop of Henle, whose um, main purpose is to concentrate the medulla so that urine can ultimately be concentrated, right? Humans like to concentrate their urine. Now the descending limb is pure water reabsorption. So how is that possible? Well, it's possible because the ascending limb through active transport, i.e. ATP use, reabsorbs sodium chloride and potassium through the 2-chloride sodium potassium pump. This sets up an osmotic gradient which causes uh, the reabsorption of water in the descending limb. So this is the basic premise behind the countercurrent multiplier system. Now at the top of the ascending limb, the concentration is roughly around 100 milliosmoles. So you can see that a lot of um, solute gets taken from the uh, filtrate in the ascending limb. Now um, the distal tubules is where aldosterone works to reabsorb sodium, water follows, um, potassium is excreted. And finally, ADH works at the distal tubules in the collecting duct, and it works by increasing water permeability. 
Um, it's the concentration gradient that was previously established that draws the water inside so the water is reabsorbed. And I said I'd talk a little bit about treatment and diagnosis. Uh, these do tend to uh, vary from one reference to the other. Um, nowhere have I seen or read of a kidney biopsy, so I think a lot of times these are just based on lab values and clinical findings. So here's a, a little table that I've made, and that's about all I have for right now. I do think this is a, a very important topic for just about any level of medical education. I hope this can be helpful to you at some point in time, and I want to thank you for joining me. Have a great evening. So long.